So how do we actually experiment well? Let's see. So the first thing uh, we wanted to remember is this caffeine example, Mr. Lackell's class. Uh, we're trying to eliminate some of the confounding by comparing the two groups. One gets cola with caffeine, the other gets caffeine free, free cola. We are not going to tell them who's getting which one, but comparing them is not the only important thing. <clears throat> Many other variables affect pulse rate, such as your caffeine tolerance, your weight, your recent caffeine consumption. What if these students like already had caffeine, some of them had like coffee in the morning or something, I don't know. Um, these variables are going to be talking, these, these are talking about characteristics of the subject. So things about the subject, how tolerant they are about the caffeine, their weight, their recent consumptions. Um, so we want to be careful about this and we also want to talk about the process of the experiment itself. How much sugar is in the cola that they're getting? Is the caffeine free and the sugar and the um, caffeine cola, are both of those having the same sugar content? The amount of soda, what if like some people got like drank the whole soda, some of them only drank half of it. The temperature of the soda, those kind of things. We've gotta be careful about that stuff as well. So to experiment well, we want to, watch this, I'm gonna show you guys a, a very important phrase. We want to create groups that are as similar as possible and treat it in exactly the same way other than just the one thing we're testing, which is the caffeine. So if treatments are given to the groups that differ greatly when the experiment begins, then we're gonna have confounding. For example, what if everybody in this regular caffeine group already drinks a lot of caffeine, so that's why they picked it, and these people don't normally drink caffeine. Okay? Their caffeine tolerances are different. And so that's going to cause a problem in my experiment. So I want to make sure that some people who are normally caffeine drinkers get the caffeine. Some people who are not get the caffeine. So I want to make sure that I mix them up. How do I do that? The way that we can do that is using random assignment. Okay. So random assignment means that I'm going to randomly assign people to the treatments. It's exactly what it sounds like, okay? So I've got 20 student volunteers that are going to participate in this experiment. I'm going to put 10 people in each group, caffeine and caffeine free. How can I do that using slips of paper, for example? How could I randomly assign people to groups using slips of paper? The hat method, exactly. I put, uh, maybe I put caffeine and caffeine free in a hat or A and B, and I don't tell them which one is A and which one is B. That way I'm taking out the placebo effect. Um, so I put A and B in a hat and everybody picks out one, right? And then that's which one you get. I don't tell you which one it is, but I know that some people have gotten each one. How would we do this with? A random number generator. How could we assign people with a random number generator? You number each person. Number each person, good. Label each person. And then use the number generator and ignore repeats. Ignore repeats. Use the random number generator to say if you get randomly picked for, if all even numbers get soda A, all odd numbers get soda B. That kind of thing. Perfect. Very good. Awesome. So random assignment should distribute the students into equal groups. Hopefully some of the girls are in both groups. Some of the boys are in both groups. Some of the caffeine tolerant people are in both groups. Some of the people who are overweight are in each group. Some of the people who are underweight are in each group. I've got a little bit of everybody in each group. Again, I want to have roughly equivalent groups. I want to roughly balance out all of these variables by random assignment, okay? Um, 
Here is your key phrase. So you're actually going to write this down at the top of 4.6 where it says key phrase. Random assignment should create groups that are roughly equivalent. That's your key phrase for random assignment. So write that down at the top of 4.6, key phrase. Random assignment should create groups that are <coughs> roughly equivalent. Meaning, a little bit of every type of person is getting each treatment. Girls, boys, caffeine tolerant, people who don't ever drink caffeine, people who are young, old, overweight, not overweight, healthy, not healthy, active, not active. All the different people are in both groups. Random assignment should create groups that are roughly equivalent. That is your key phrase for random assignment. When you guys are asked, why do we do random assignment? To create roughly equivalent groups. That's basically your answer. Why do we do random assignment? To create roughly equivalent groups. You're going to hear that a hundred million times. So why do we do random assignment? To create roughly equivalent groups. Very good. Okay. Awesome. All right. Here's an example. This one's actually on your paper as well. Many people blame TV for the increased problem in obesity. Does the type of program influence how much people eat? According to a recent study, the answer is yes. 94 college students were randomly assigned to one of three treatments, watching 20 minutes of a Hollywood action movie, watching 20 minutes of an interview program, while watching participants were given snacks, M&Ms, cookies, carrots, grapes, and they were allowed to eat as much as they wanted. Subjects who watched the movie excerpts with sound ate 65% more calories than subjects who watched the interview shows. Participants who watched the silent version of the movie ate 46% more calories than those who watched the interview show. What is the purpose of random assignment in this experiment? Boom. Guys, this whole question gave you all this detail just for you to say the same thing I've been saying for the last five minutes. What is the purpose of random assignment? To create roughly equivalent groups. The purpose of random assignment was to create these roughly equivalent groups, and that helps us to avoid confounding variables. You guys are going to get really tired of answering that question, particularly when you're doing your saplings. It's going to ask you probably... Five times, why did we do random assignment? To create roughly equivalent groups. That's the whole reason. Do we have two saplings today? Um, yes, but they're not due until next Monday. Yeah. So they're, they're available now, but they're not due till next Monday. So, um, and you guys are going to have Thursday and Friday in class to work on the three that you have. So these two and then the one tomorrow. All right, cool. So, random assignment works best when there are many subjects in the experiment. If only six people were in this particular TV watching experiment, then the three groups would be pretty different. I might have, for example, a boy and a girl in two of the groups, and then two girls in one of the groups. So, I would want to be careful about having a small sample if I am trying to make sure I have good random assignment. Okay, so in this particular study, there were 57 females and 37 males. And in that particular situation, we were able to randomly assign people into all the different groups. Okay, so I want to make sure I use enough people to have good replication. I don't want just one person getting a certain treatment. Okay, must there be random assignment? You should definitely have random assignment in your experiments if it's going to be a well done experiment. Random assignment is very important. So um, it's gonna be very difficult to find enough subjects to participate if you don't 
um, have a good enough random assignment. So make sure you have enough of those. All right, uh, we wanna make sure that our experimental units are not identical. Don't use all girls, don't use all boys, kind of things that you would think about normally, okay? So those are our experiments. Um, other sources of variability, you wanna make sure that um, you are taking into account your actual experiment. Everybody should get the same treatment uh, other than the active ingredient. So with, again, the soda, make sure the soda has the same sugar content. It's at the same temperature. Everyone's in the same environment. They're all getting the same amount, that kind of thing. Um, that's kind of what that's talking about as well. This helps to prevent confounding. Everybody's going to get the same amount. We don't want to give everybody different amounts. <laughs> this shows you the differences on if you just allow people to pick their amount of soda and people who drink caffeine are going to drink more soda than people who don't drink caffeine but if you give them all the same amount it ends up distributing correctly so there's that uh, there's that okay cool so tomorrow when we get to class, we will do this example uh, just to kind of refresh our memory from what we talked about today. And then we'll finish up the chapter with 4.7, which is um, basically how do I know if it's cause and effect is basically what 4.7 is. Cool? Cool. So uh, researchers could have carried out the random assignment in either of those two ways. Good. So they could have uh, not disclosed the experiment. Good. And what would that be called if they know what's going on, but the subjects don't really know what's going on? Single blinded. Very good. Or um, And then also for random assignment, they could have used hat method and half get multitask. Perfect. All right, what'd you guys say for, what is the purpose of random assignment? Good, we wanna reduce, good, we wanna reduce confounding variables. And what is the, uh, what's the key phrase? Very good. Create roughly equivalent groups. So hopefully by doing this random assignment, I'll get some people that are just kind of naturally good at multitasking in both groups. I'll get some people who have, you know, a little ADHD in both groups. I get some people who've had their caffeine in both groups. I, you know, all the things, right? I've, people who have had limited amount of sleep is in both groups, that kind of thing. And then what is a, give me one of the variables that the researchers kept the same for all the subjects. They all had the same lecture. So it wasn't that the multitasking group had the one lecture and the other group had a different lecture. What else? What else was the same? The test at the end. Perfect, Caleb. But the test at the end. They all took the same exact test at the end. Perfect. What else was the same? Give me one more. What about the way they were asked to multitask? So it wasn't just that you were given a general instruction of, hey, today during lecture, multitask. It was multitask by web browsing on your laptop. So like even the way that they were asked to multitask was kind of controlled, okay? So the multitask. Um, and what's the point? Why do we wanna control all of these different things? Kind of goes back to the same reason we want to do random assignment. We want to reduce those variables, those confounding variables, uh, from influencing our results. So we want to reduce confounding variables. What questions do you guys have about this?
Easy, right? Cool. All right.